it is slow Saturday. My Saturday is going to be everything but slow, but it's okay. I'll survive it. So this last week, there didn't happen much in my life as far as knitting or crochet is concerned. I um, was hoping to have my bespoke sweater done by now. I'm far from that. I'm busy with the first sleeve. Um, it's about hmm, two thirds down. And then I still have to make another one. Now for the knitters that like to wear, uh, that like to knit sweaters, I created an undergarm gusset and I love it. Let me show, it actually shows up very nicely on this one. Check that little triangle thing here. That's my underarm gusset. I feel so accomplished. Anyway, so I will continue with the sweater uh, for the weekend. And I should get it finished somewhere during next week. I should. But whether it's going to happen, I don't know. I had a, a week that was so... Um, frustratingly busy without doing much and I don't want another one like that but anyway okay so bespoke is coming soon she is nearly done I wanted to do a whole lot more before spring but I'm not going to be able to do it I've got yarn for three more sweaters I've got cherry red um, cotton erin and kit silk I've got this deep emerald green double knit and mohair and I've got turquoise blue uh, mohair that I wanted to use in a sweater and I'm not going to get those three done before the spring is here so they will probably be left over for next winter because the summer tops are already lining up in my head you know how it goes so I've got yarn for four summer tops already in my stash. I've got three here. This one was custom dyed for me by Donna Biddle from Colorspun. It's um, a very dark charcoal with licorice all sorts colors. And this was actually done months and months ago it was quite a long time ago it's got yellow and lime green and turquoise and purple and red in yeah and um, this is pure cotton um, I think it is oh it's double knit weight okay so this is pure cotton double knit this is for a little summer top and then I have Naughty Habit Merino Sock that I received as a gift. Look at this color. I think if my bestie Alta sees it, she's going to try and bribe it off me. This is very much her colors. It's shades of blue, pink and purple. I don't wear denims. I only wear black. But I think this looks lovely next to the black. <laughs> so this will also become a little summer top. For those that don't know, Merino sock weight yarn is a lovely yarn to knit summer tops with because the Merino regulates your body temperature. You don't sweat and you don't get cold. It's really, really lovely for summer. I've got some very nice Merino um, short sleeve toppies for summer and this is going to become that again. Then I have a very bright orange merino sock in my stash. And the story behind that, the reason why I didn't take it out, I must tell you a story. I designed a merino summer top for the Yarn magazine. And the top's name was She Walked Away. And this is one of my favorite summer tops of all times. It's got stocking stitch in the front, stocking stitch on the sleeve, but the back is just lace. And I knitted it up in that orange merino sock. And 
I actually went to the photo shoot with that. So that is the yarn that you will see if you look at She Walked Away on Ravelry. You can only buy it as part of the yarn magazine and the yarn magazine is like ten dollars but there are so many patterns in there and it's absolutely delightful it's a magazine worth buying i just can't remember which edition it was in but yeah i'll go find it for you and put it in the comments anyway at the photo shoot now now this lace panel at the back proved extremely challenging because it pulled in in the length so I did short rows right from the top, um, okay, with the first version, that orange one, when I wore it at the photo shoot, I could feel that the back wasn't long enough, it fell backwards and it lifted the neck up in the front and I didn't like that. So that whole thing was completed, washed, photoshopped, everything was done and I came home and I frogged it. And I rolled up the orange yarn and I put it down. I didn't want to work with it again. Um, at that moment, I was pissed off with it. So I took a turquoise. Um, and I redid the design to include short rows right from the top of the neck to the bottom of the back to get that lace to sit properly. We had it retested. I re-knitted mine, but the photos was good enough for the pattern. So the pattern was released with version 1's photos, although I changed it afterwards. And um, it's absolutely delightful. Maybe I must show you the top. Let me go get it for you. All my merino sweaters and tops are packed in plastic Ziploc bags like that to protect them from anything that might want to eat them, just in case. Okay, she will now be full of creases because she's been in the cupboard for a long while. Okay, so the front is just stocking stitch and the sleeves as well. But the back has got this, let me, let me do it like this, yeah. The back has got this very nice lattice pattern right from the top to the bottom. And... Um, Oh, this is one of my favorite tops to wear in summer. It's so nice. And the bottom, um, she's got a little uh, I called cast off at the bottom. So that orange yarn from version one is also still in my stash um, waiting to become a summer top again. So I'm definitely going to knit that up this year. Um, I've been eyeing that orange for a long time. Yeah. So this one is called She Walked Away and you will find it in the yarn magazine. I will post the link to the relevant uh, edition for you. And then the fourth yarn that I have waiting was a bit of a surprise. Um, we live in a very small, quaint little town. It's about 50 k's from major cities um, and there is no yarn shop here. There are two or three shops that keep a little bit of yarn but none of them specialize in yarn so it's actually only acrylic that you find there. But the other day we walked past a china shop and this was in the china shop and I was shocked. Um, this is Madame Tricot, Camilla Batik. Um, it says mercerized cotton. I think you're going to battle to see the color. It's, it's um, a mixture of ice blue, a very light mint green, and then a purple and a darker purple. It's actually very, very nice. I really like it. Um, so this is also going to become a summer top for me. They are lining up in my head. I must just get rid of Bespoke first. And then the other thing that is waiting for me to get going on it. If you haven't seen Erin Caress, I'll post the link to that as well. Erin Caress is a blanket that I knitted quite a couple of years ago. And we did it in panels, cabled panels. So it was a very nice project to work on because your cable panels was, I think, like 20 centimeters at the most, whatever. 
So you could roll up the panel and secure it with a pin and take this knitting wherever you went. I can still remember I was knitting um, Aaron Caress when my son got married. That's right, we took this with us when my son got married and that was in 2016. So it's six years ago. April, six years ago, I was working on Aaron Caress. Aaron Caress is on my Ravelry website and I used um, Moya Caress, which is a textured cotton. It's a slub yarn plied with a, a, a normal cotton, so you have a textured cotton. And I used it double strand on 7 millimeter needles. And it was a huge hit at that time. Um, it's still my favorite blanket in my house. And that blanket actually caused quite a mess in my head. Because after that, I preferred a heavy knitted blanket over a crochet blanket because of the density of the the fabric that you create. I didn't like the crochet blanket anymore. Yeah. So I was I spoke about it. I can't remember whether it was last week or the week before. I spoke about it that I'm looking for a way to use up my yarn waste that's left over after a project. Um, I don't feel like crocheting long rows up and down. I absolutely hate motifs. I'm not going to join 300 odd blocks or whatever. It's not going to happen. I know that. I know I'm going to start and I won't finish it. So it will be a waste. And then yesterday, Ulta and I sat here. She usually visits me on a Friday, but that's going to end soon. But anyway. We sat here and we were brainstorming this thing and in the end we decided this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same type of thing that I did with Erin Caress, cabled panels. They will obviously be different. Um, but the biggest difference is this. I'm going to start the cable panel with a little border and carry it up on the side. And then when that particular color is finished, I'll put the border at the top, start with a new color, not casting off, make the border with a new color and carry on with a new color. Because in my mind, if I'm knitting a cable, the cable can't change from one color to the next just in the middle of nowhere. It will freak me out. I did it in Let's Play. And I really didn't like it afterwards. It was like n n there's something missing in the middle. So I'm going to write this pattern in such a way that you can use whatever scraps you want. Um, and then you can knit the cable panel as long as you want. It can be one meter, it can be one and a half, it can be two, it can be three, I couldn't be bothered. Um, it will be written in such a way that you can make the cable panels as long as you want. Now the nice thing about this design, I work with different um, yarn weights. So, I will. nothing stops you from doing one panel with, in my instance now, I will do um, double knit with mohair on a 5 or a 5.5 millimeter needle and I will finish that panel like that. The next panel I might want to do um, sock and mohair on a 4 millimeter needle. And then I must just carry on that entire panel with that yarn weight. Because you can't change yarn weight in the middle of the panel. But you can use different yarn weights for different panels. And then we just sew them up afterwards. It's one long line, one long seam to put together. That's quick and fast. You crochet it together. Um, and Bob's your uncle. You've got a blanket. So that project is going to take a long time because it's going to be my waste project. I'm not going to buy yarn for it. I'm only going to use yarn waste for it. And um, I will probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'll still think about how we're going to do this. Because I would like to start releasing it so that you don't have to wait three or four years for me to have enough ways to get the project done. So maybe I'll start the different panels and just post little bits of it 
instead of the entire completed project. I don't know, I'll see. And then obviously I'll do another one for the summer yarns, the cotton yarns. Um, so it's going to be very multicolored, but I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be very nice to have such a multicolored, very nice thick blanket for winter in merino and for summer in cotton. That's what I think. Okay, so in this last week, my website crashed. I only did an update that was verified with all my pluggings and the whole thing just don't I was so upset. It gave me a critical error and I suffered for days. And eventually I was like, die you bugger, die. You can just die. So I posted on social media and I said, look, I'm stopping this website. It can just go away now. But logic prevailed in the end and I eventually got it right after restoring some backups. So the website is back up. Now let me give you a tip. If you are working off a pattern on my website on a regular basis, you better go download it because I'm taking all the patterns off my website and I'm moving them to Ravelry and they will all become paid patterns because I have to stay alive, you know? Yeah. And because of that, I've got to stay alive. I've decided to go back into the labor market. I'm bored out of my mind. Um, knitting and crochet is just not enough of a challenge for my mind. And financially, it's difficult at the moment. Due to a couple of reasons. But anyway, so I'm starting a job on the 1st of September. Um, it's been given to me verbally. But I haven't received the contract yet, so we hope it's going to come through in time. But anyway, I'm starting again on the 1st of September full-time as a business analyst. That's actually what I do. And then my crochet and knitting will take the second seat in my life again. So we might not get um, new patterns as fast as I've been doing them now. But I will keep going and Slow Saturday will keep going as well. I don't know... I might make Slow Saturday a monthly podcast instead of a weekly podcast. Um, I would like to hear your opinion on that. Simply because I won't have that much to show in terms of finished stuff every Saturday. So I don't know what you want. Tell me what you want. Are we going to do it weekly or are we going to do it monthly? Anyway, so... That is my plans. Now today we are going to go house hunting. I must tell you this story. We used to live on a farm. And we had the farm in the market for more than three years and nobody wanted to buy the farm. So last year on the 6th of November, this potential buyer walked in. And he went through the farm and when he walked through everything, he came back and he said, I hope you can pack fast. I'm moving in on the 1st of December. And I was like, you said, what? So we had to pack very fast and we had to find another home very fast. And there were two houses available in this little town at that stage. The one was this one and the other one was a house that wasn't suitable to our needs. It had no lock-up garage and my husband has got a lot of power tools and... Um, so we had to take this small little townhouse. And moving from a farm to a townhouse was traumatic to say the least. We have a lot of stuff in storage and the lack of space here is driving us all insane. It really is. The dogs are frustrated. We've got an 85 kilogram burbul dog in a townhouse with a Labrador. It's not working. And my husband is by no means a small man. He's huge. He's tall and broad-shouldered. and He loves to cook. And I'm a vegetarian. He's not. So we're always in the kitchen at the same time, bumping each other, pushing each other, stepping on each other's toes. And then the dogs are in between us at the same time. So we are all at the point where we need space. This, this is now making us all depressed and with me going back into the labor market we decided that we have to move back to the city 
so that he's closer to his office. He only goes in twice a week, but um, we want to get closer to his office, and then I will go into Santon, which is Joburg. So if we can get back into Pretoria, he can be close to his office and I can be close to the highway at least. So that's the plan. And, but we were talking about this uh, and it was depending on whether I'm going to get a job or not. Or it was like rather when I get a job we would have to move because fuel in South Africa is ridiculously expensive at the moment it's just we can't afford to drive to the city every day it's it's crazy so when I walked in this week into his office here at home and I said to him I got the job we need to move he looked at me his eyes widened and he said oh god please don't let my wife tell me we're moving in two weeks time I just burst out laughing I said well if I find a house for the 1st of September, we're moving in two weeks' time. <laughs> so today, we are going to go house hunting. Yeah, we are going to take a drive out to Centurion and see what we can find there. Centurion is a suburb in Pretoria, close to the highway. And see which of the neighborhoods we really like. And we're going to see if there are any houses on show this weekend, maybe. I don't know. We're just going to take a drive around and see what we find. So I will be knitting in the car. Yeah. And then in just over a week, hopefully, I'm going to start my new job. I'm very excited about it. I really am. I need a new challenge. Okay, great. So that's all the news from me. And then this afternoon late, we'll probably start a fire outside in the braai and have a little bit of a bobby. We might, we might not. We'll see. But tomorrow is going to be a slow day for us. So today won't be slow, but tomorrow will be slow. Okay, great. So let me know what you think. When we should do the podcast or rather how, how often we should do the podcast. Should we keep it weekly? Should we make it monthly? What do you want? Tell me. Okay, and then I will post for you the links to, what did I say? What must I give you? I must give you the link to the yarn magazine for She Walked Away. Oh, and Erin caressed the blanket. And I think that was all. I think. Okay, and then Bespoke will come soon. I don't have an interview for you this week. My week was just too wild. It was really, really very wild this week. But I've got um, somebody lined up for next week. Adela Marie. She is the queen of marling. I've never seen somebody that can work with colors like that woman. I wish I could zip open her brain and see how colors are organized in her brain. I would love to. I've seen her on um, once on a weaving workshop. She made a sampler mixing different colors. Oh my goodness, I will ask her to keep the sampler close by next week so that she can show it to you. Her modeling is just absolutely mind-blowing. So I, I really want to learn from her and maybe use some modeling in that scrappy blanket that I want to do. I think that's going to be... A nice twist on the whole thing but my mind is so linear I'm battling mixing colors if if I want to use different colors I will buy variegated yarn I, I have my mind is so my brain is so boring with colors and idealist is just so interesting so yeah maybe she can Teach me some marling and then we can incorporate that into our scrappy blanket. So that interview will be next week. Okay. So have a great day. Have a marvelous weekend. And um, yeah, be blessed.